This last week, Sony announced on the PlayStation State of Play that they were kind of shadow dropping a free game for everybody called Silent Hill The Short Message. And so being a Silent Hill fan, I love all of the games for the most part. Um, I thought I had to check it out. Now, I've played one, I loved it. Two is one of my favorite games of all time. I really have a soft spot for three. I really think Heather is a great character. Um, for The Room, I have some really fond memories of that one. And from a first person point of view, it was a really interesting way uh, for Silent Hill to go. Um, I even own Shattered Memories, which is kind of a reimagining of the first game in the Wii, uh, on, on the Wii console. And um, that's kind of like a collector's item nowadays. So uh, I, I have an affinity and a true love for Silent Hill. Um, it was the first horror series that I really got into um, outside of a, a little series called The Suffering. And if you haven't ever heard of The Suffering and you like some kind of monster-based psychological thriller horror um, and you have a PS2 and you don't mind a little... Uh, it's not terribly gory by today's standards, but back then it was pretty intense. Go check out The Suffering. But the short message, that's why you're here, that's why you clicked on the video because this is my thoughts, my review on the short message and I'm gonna be very honest with you um, I think in order for me to do the review justice I have to go into some spoiler territory so if you don't want to be spoiled at all click away now it's about an hour 45 two hour game it's not gonna take you terribly long go play the game come back and watch this video see if we agree on how we perceive this game and how we would score it so it's not bad okay it's not a bad game it's just it's not a good game. And it, I, it makes me a little concerned for the future of Silent Hill. Um, I loved PT and I really thought that that was a fun experience. And this felt like PT imagined into a longer game. I wouldn't even say a full length game. I think it is a two hour game experience. And I, and I can't describe it any other way um, because it's complete, right? It, you, from finish to end, the whole the whole story's there, um, but it felt very hollow. Um, it deals with uh, some really, um, really strong, sensitive subject matter in terms of self harm and, and things of that nature. And um, I I feel like they're very important topics for us to talk about. And at the same time, I think that the dialogue of the game. Uh, did nothing to help create a, a, a good understanding of those topics. I felt like it was written by an AI um, uh, system that had only watched uh, Netflix series on teen dramas and it, it made for some just really uh, cringy, like truly like uh, not great uh, conversations and dialogues and internal thoughts being verbalized and that to me really hindered the game um again i think it's a very real uh issue that we need to talk about i have a teenage daughter and um uh, you know those are the kind of things we talk about we talk about your self-worth and we talk about value and we talk about friendships and we talk about uh making sure that your mental health is in good in a good place but the way that this game uh structured it and created it made it with the exception of the last moment of the game, um, a little weird and a little disjointed and unrealistic. Now, I'm a, I'm a man in my 30s, so like, who am I to speak, right? So I want to be very clear. This is just from my perspective and from having a teenage daughter and also somebody who has dealt with mental health things in the past. Um, I, I totally appreciate them them addressing this and, and, and going down this, uh, this subject matter. And I think it's really... Uh, beautiful that a, a company did this in a game format and at the same time it did not feel incredibly authentic and I think part of that's hindered by the game and part of it's hindered by the script dialogue whatever you want to call it but that's not even the worst part the worst part to me well there's multiple worst parts um I have to like brace myself against my desk I'm probably bouncing around a little bit now the cutscenes were so weird. Like you play the game and it has a very realized art style, which it looks a little outdated, but it's not bad. I mean, it could work in this context of Silent Hill, the constructs of that world. Um, but when you go into 
the actual like cutscenes and flashbacks and all that stuff, which are flashbacks of the game of you speaking with a particular character or interacting, or kind of seeing what she's dealing with, um, it goes into like this weird, like hyper realistic, I think AI driven um, like style, and it felt super uncomfortable and very disjointed. Again, it, there's a lot of disconnect throughout the game of disjointedness. Um, it felt very uh, stark in contrast from the stylized art of the game and it made it feel like it wasn't relevant like obviously it was because it was the story and that's what was driving it but in terms of finding the connection points on art they weren't there but what it did get right is the atmosphere and the tone it's very silent hill there's fog there's the iconic soundtracks and ambient sounds and um, it really leans into the style of Silent Hill, which I do appreciate. It feels like it's right at home with the rest of the games. And then, like other famous Silent Hill uh, games, there are some chase sequences where you're being chased down by a monster and you have to get out uh, as quickly as you can while avoiding the monster that's chasing you and sometimes they'll appear in your path and it's kind of structured like a maze. So. Um, that also felt very akin to the Silent Hill franchise. Uh, I didn't like the way it was structured in this. I felt like it was too frequent uh, because it was a two hour game. Um, and also, I didn't like that in those moments you didn't get just more time to kind of explore a part of the game that I thought was really interesting conceptually, at least from like an art style and what you're really dealing with at that moment, which is then later revealed towards the end of the game. And I really think towards the end of the game, you have some really strong story beats and some really beautiful um, storytelling um, that really makes um, the narrative feel a little earned, but there's still some just, like I said earlier, some really difficult dialogue uh, decisions to like work past. Um, and like every Silent Hill game, a lot of the world and a lot of the story and a lot of what's happening is being told through interacting with different uh, things. So in this game, in particular, it's dealing with a lot of news articles, books, um, and clippings, and, and reading those. So make sure that you don't just skip over those. If you're not somebody who likes to explore the world, um, you might feel a little kind of lost. Not in terms of like the, the direct narrative as it relates to Anita, but the overall uh, narrative of what this place is um, and some of the lore behind it. So all that being said, I, I really struggled with what kind of score to give this game because it's free. Like it's a free game and it's a free complete game. It's not a trial, it's not a demo, it's not um, DLC. It's a, it's a free complete game from start to finish. Or do I just rate it based on the fact that it's a video game? So I'm just gonna do uh, kind of both those scores and then average them out. Because if it was any other game, I'd give us a five out of 10. If it wasn't a free game. If it was just a, a game I paid money for, It'd be 5 out of 10. Being a free game, I actually think it's more like a 7 out of 10, guess, especially if you look at like um, the amount of, of work that went into this. Um, and so I guess it's a 6 out of 10 for me. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. I think I think that it's like I said before, the topic is very important. It's very um, relevant to our, our day and age. And I think that um, the, for the fact that it's free and if you want to kill a couple of hours and play something Silent the Hill, go ahead. It does make me a little concerned where we might be heading for Silent Hill because I don't want necessarily more of this. But for being kind of a holdover until Silent Hill 2 Remake comes out, which I also have my concerns about, um, it's fine. It's decent. I'll take it. So let me know down in the comments below what you think uh, of Silent Hill, the short message. Uh, did you like it? Did you hate it? I think both uh, perspectives on it are totally valid. Or you like me and kind of sit in the middle like, could take it or leave it. I'm um, going to have a review video on Choo Choo Trials coming up here soon, so keep an eye out for that. We just surpassed 1,800 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your subscribe. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. Uh, make sure you like the video. Make sure, like I said, comment down below your thoughts on short message, and also Silent Hill as a whole. How are you feeling about um, Silent Hill 2 Remake, um, and, and where do you think we're going to go with the franchise from here? Because obviously we have a lot of other games like Silent Hill F and, and others that are coming out soon, so... Thank you guys. I will see you very soon.